just the institution, not just for the buildings and the organizations. God, but I pray for your church, the church that you died for, the church that you gave your blood for, the church, God, that you spoke and said upon this rock, I will build my church. I pray for that church, God. You said when you build your church, that the very gates of hell wouldn't stand against your church. And God, tonight, help us to be a part of that church. It's a holy church. Yes, Lord, it's a sanctified church. Help us to be a part of that church, God. Church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Church that's sanctified by you. Church that's kept by the Holy Ghost. We want to be that church. We want to be righteous. Oh, God, more than anything in the world tonight, we want to know your salvation. We want to know the joy of your salvation. We want to know the joy of the cleansing by your blood. We want to know the joy, yes, Lord, of being filled with your promised Holy Ghost. Fill us tonight with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus the Christ, fill us again with the Holy Ghost. Give us a fresh anointing. Right now, God, while we are praying, give us a fresh moving of your spirit. God, I'm praying that you would come and bring a new dispensation to the church. Like you've done down through the years, God. When you came and renewed the church with the new holiness movement, where people began to realize that God is calling for a holy church. A holy church. Holiness means righteous. Holiness means to be sanctified. Holy means to be in God's will. We want to be holy tonight, God. We don't want to just live according to the standards of the world. We want to be holy. We want to be a peculiar people. Make, yes, Lord, make us holy tonight. Make us sanctified. Bring a new movement in your church, God, just like you did in Topeka, Kansas and moved out to Azusa when people were falling out of the anointing and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, even when we are not in buildings, even we are not when we are not in fellowship together, let us lift up holy hands and let us feel that anointing of the Holy Ghost, God. Let it come again like a mighty rushing wind. Fill our houses. Oh, God, come in my house tonight and let the Holy Ghost move until I can feel it in every corner, until I can feel him in every room. Let the Holy Ghost move, God, until he brings me the joy that causes me to just lift my hands and clap my hands and stomp my feet with joy. Send the Holy Ghost here, God. Fill this room with an anointed presence. Do it, God. Hallelujah. Do it, God. Do it because you promised it. Do it because I believe it and I'm waiting for it. Fill us again. Now, God, look upon the world. There's so much conflict in the world now. God, we keep reminding ourselves and even as we remind ourselves, we look to you and we remind you though you need not be reminded. We just remind you, God, because we want you to know that we believe it. You said, if my people, hallelujah, you're sanctified and holy people, your people who, who believe in you, your people who are committed to your will and your way, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then then will I hear from heaven. I forgive their sins. And I'll heal their land. God, we your people tonight. We're crying for change. Oh, God, this world now, not only is sick with COVID, God, you can heal from this pandemic. You did it so many times, God. We know the Bible. We know your word. When plagues came, when pestilence came, after a period of time, God, in your timing, you came and took them away.
God, now the government, medical science, politicians and doctors are trying to do what they can with this COVID, but it's your problem, God. You're the only one ultimately that has the solution. Heal, God. Take it away. Ah, take it away. Oh, God, do it because we ask you. God, you promised us that if we would pray, you would change things. And we're praying tonight. Hallelujah. We're praying in faith. We're praying and believing. Take this COVID away, God. Protect us from it. Build a fence around us, God, that a wall, God. Treat us like you treated the children of Israel when you said to them, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. God, don't let the weapons of the world, don't let those weapons, whether it be COVID or conflict, anything else, don't let it prosper in our lives. Protect our homes, protect our families, protect our church home, protect our church family, protect our fellowship. Don't let it come nigh us. Oh God, we live in a world where political corruption flourishes. Immorality is the order of the day. Lying, cheating, stealing. Integrity, God, is not even known. But you're God. Change it. Fix it. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it like it ought to be fixed. Hallelujah. Change it, Lord. Change it, Lord. God, I pray now that you would give us hope again. The hope of your glory. The hope of your presence. Hallelujah. Hope that comes only with you and through you. We believe tonight, God. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. God, we turn on our televisions and we listen to the news media. We buy the newspapers and we read the newspapers. But God, only good news comes from you. The only reading of what is true and right and has the solution is your word. Give us to be about your word. Give us, God, to listen to you. Turn a, the ear of our hearts, the ear of our souls, the ear of our minds to you. God, we listen. We listen for the winds of change that only you can bring. Do it. Thank you, Jesus. Do it tonight, Jesus. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, stay the hand of death. Stay the hand of death. We saw in the Bible, God, where when the death angel had already been sent out to move, but you turned them around. And there were so many times, God, when death was right there. You said, no, not yet. Live on a little while longer. Stay the hand of death, God. There are some people right now, God, that the death angel is already prepared to take, but change it and say, live on a little while longer. Please, dear God, give life tonight. Give life tonight. We ask you like Hezekiah, God. Our faces are turned to the wall. And God, we can't even talk about what good we've done because there is no good that we do that is deserving of your favor. But because we're your children, we can ask for your grace. Because we're your children, we can ask for your compassion. Because you're, we're your children, we can ask you, God, for another chance, for chance after chance. Stay the hand of death. Give life, master. Hallelujah. And in that life, let there be purpose. Let that purpose be praise. Do it, God, as a testimony to you. 
Do it because you get the praise out of it. Do it because you get the glory out of it, God. Now, God, we believe you tonight. We trust you. We depend on you, God. God, as we get ready to end prayer tonight, just know that we love you with all of our hearts. We don't take you for granted. And God, we don't take for granted that you know we love you. We need to let you know, God, we love you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Even, God, when we make mistakes, even when we fall short, we love you, God. Hallelujah. We live in this sinful flesh, but from the depths of our souls, we love you. We love the name of Jesus. We love the name of Jesus. We bow before his name. We honor his name. Now, God, as we end this prayer tonight, don't let us end our communication with you. Give us a praying spirit. Give us a praying spirit. Ah, mm, a praying spirit. Let there be prayer from the depths of our souls. Let there be prayer in our minds. Let there be prayer in our hearts. Oh God, even when we sleep at night, let prayer be in our dreams. When we wake up in the middle of the night, let us wake up uttering prayer. When we wake up in the morning, God, the first thing that comes in our mind, let it be a mind of prayer, a mind of consecration. All day long, God, let us be with you in prayer. Now we bless you. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor tonight in Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Just before we say amen, just before we close the prayer tonight, are there any other prayer requests? Listen, those of you who are with us on Facebook, if you have prayer, you can put it right in the comments and uh, you can even continue you can just go right to our web page and leave us a message, EphesusMinistries.com or EphesusMinistries.org. We are so glad to pray for you. We pray regularly. And let me tell you something, God answers prayer. Some of us here can really have the testimony that say we have prayed and God just keeps on answering. We keep on praying and God just keeps on answering. Hallelujah. Any prayer request just before we close prayer tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now God bless us tonight. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Jesus. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer tonight. We love you and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, as we get ready to go into Bible study tonight, let me say again, welcome everybody. I am so glad you are here with us tonight. What a privilege, what a blessing that you are here with us. You are here in the house of God, in the house of God. Somebody might be saying, well, Pastor, no, we're not at the church. We're not in Ephesus. Uh, uh, are you getting old and forgetful? Pastor, it looks like we're in your living room. Yep, this is the house of God, my living room. Pastor, how can you be bodacious enough to say you're in your living room and, it, and, and it's the house of God? God said, uh, uh, I don't dwell in a temple made by hands. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture that says God inhabits the praises of his people. Wherever you're praying, wherever you have faith, if you have even made a commitment to say, God, I want you to live in my house. That's where God is. God is wherever you are. So tonight, welcome to the house of God. And right where you are tonight, be sure that you are in the house of God. We're going to the Bible study about the next half hour. And uh, even if we end early, it's okay. Uh, why is Bible study important, do you think? Is, is it just something that we just sort of need to do to keep the church alive? No, no, it isn't. We, we need to uh, do Bible study because the scriptures say, and if you've been around church long enough, especially the Kojic church, the Pentecostal church, you know that scripture where Paul wrote to Timothy and said, um, um, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed gives himself to study. Hallelujah. Study. He said, well, it said it like this. Study 
to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. So you got to get in the word. You got to get in the word. And, and I tell you, the word is so absolutely wonderful. Bible study is important uh, for another reason, because the Bible says the word is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. It, 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 there is power in the word. You've got to be in Bible study because if you don't know the word, you don't have the power that is accessible to you. You've got to know the word to know the power that you have. Finally, we got to study the word because the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You got to keep your mind active. Anybody that does not read, that does not study, your mind loses some brain cells. But when you study, when you read, uh, my mother, as she went into her senior years, uh, uh, we always grew up in, in a home where we were reading and writing. And in her senior years, you would always find my mother, if she was sitting down, had like a puzzle book or something to read, something close by, even my father. My father only had an eighth grade education and he was not much of a television watcher. You would find my dad with two things, um, uh, the Bible, and sometimes he would have a dictionary or some informative books around. He was always reading in his extra time. Mama would either be reading or sometimes she would just be sitting down and working puzzles, either crossword puzzles or those uh, word search puzzles. And she always says, I've got to keep my mind active. I've got to keep my mind active. If you uh, don't keep your body active, it will atrophy. If you don't keep your body active, it, it tightens up and you'll die early. If you don't keep your mind active, you will be brain dead. You know how many brain dead people they are walking around, they never read, they never study. And uh, it's a shame. Uh, there are some people who uh, they say they are saved and sanctified, but they just don't do Bible study. I would never say they are not saved and sanctified, but there's a little spiritual death about it because you got to know the word. Pastor, why are you talking about all of that? Because I need to strictly emphasize how important Bible study is tonight. And I know I probably am preaching to the choir. So y'all get out and people who don't get into Bible study, tell them, Pastor said, you ain't becoming a Bible study. You might be brain dead. You better check your brain. Check your brain. Yeah. Tonight, we're going to look at the book of Jude. In the, in the weeks coming, uh, we are going now into very, very holy season, the season that we commemorate the death and the resurrection of Christ. And we ought to do it justice. Um, again, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And even if we are going to observe the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ, we ought to know the truth about it. And uh, you all know me. Uh, I am. Uh, I, I sometimes think a little differently, but it is because I read, I study, I wonder, and, and when I wonder, I, I look things up and study about them. And, and so, uh, I just don't necessarily believe some of the things that 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 typically a lot of other people believe about Easter and stuff like that. I, I, I certainly. Uh, I've never believed that a rabbit lays eggs, especially chocolate eggs. I, I, uh, I didn't, even <laughs> didn't even need to study to wonder about that. But that's some other things that we're gonna be talking about in coming weeks. I wanna preface uh, this study tonight by looking at the book of Jude. How do we take what's going on in the world now? And not just in, in the global world and what is in the news media, but in our own particular lives. We, we live now in a world, I, I don't believe that you can really say that the stress of this world does not impact you. It impacts our families. What's going on with our children and, and not getting the education that they ought to be getting and, and uh, as a result of that, their minds are suffering. It, it's stressful to us. All of us know and have known, I should say, people who are going on to glory, people who have passed away. That impacts us. 
And even if you just listen to the news and keep watching the hanky panky that's going on out there, and I just see it like that, it's it's a it's crazy, just unbelievably crazy. One of the things, let me let me throw this in real quick. That, you know, as to what's going on with the governor now, what amazes me is recognizing that it has less to do with morality than it has to do with politics. And I want to say to people, how dare you mix morality with politics? You know, uh, I wish I could talk more about that, but I need to get into the word tonight. So we're gonna look at Jude. Jude was, uh, he called himself a servant of Jesus. And it is sort of commonly known that he was the brother, the, the actual blood brother of Jesus Christ, one of his followers and one of his servants. Jude wrote just this one book. It's not a long book, but it is such a powerful book. And so um, now uh, y'all get to know me. I love the word. I love the word right from the word. And so I'm going to read it in the King James Version tonight, the entire thing. And then I'm going to read it in the uh, message Bible. And so read along with me. Uh, by now, hopefully you should know if you come into Bible study, bring your Bibles along with you. Listen to what Jude said. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God. That's me, y'all. <laughs> you ought to patch yourself when I say that and say, Jude was writing to me, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. We're sanctified in God. And we're preserved and kept in Jesus Christ. Uh, one reason the world is in so much trouble is because God makes it clear there's a difference. You cannot be like everybody else and say that you are called and sanctified in God and Christ Jesus. It's only a few, as a matter of fact. And aren't you glad you are part of that few? that one day he saved you and sanctified you and filled you with the Holy Ghost. Listen to what Jude declares and leaves to us, and this comes from God. Mercy unto you, oh my God. Let me, let me pause there for a minute. I'm so glad for God's mercy because you, you hear me saying that I'm saved, sanctified, baptized and filled with the precious Holy Ghost and that with the mighty burning fire, but I'm so glad for God's mercy. Because if it were not for God's mercy, God would say to me sometimes, Jeff, you don't deserve to be saved. Hallelujah. Because I recognize there is no good thing that dwelleth in me. I keep on saying it, y'all. I, I keep on saying it because we've got to keep on getting it. We are never good enough, never good enough to be sanctified. Maybe your sins are not the sins of other people. Maybe you don't do drugs. Maybe you don't smoke. You don't drink. You don't commit adultery. You don't commit fornication. You don't lie knowingly. You don't lie knowingly. But Ephesus, y'all have heard me say, if you borrow some money, you borrow it, and anytime you borrow, there's a promise to pay back. And when you don't pay back, you have lied. You've cheated. You've stolen. So maybe you don't do a lot of self-righteousness becomes a sin. And so even though Jude writes and he says, listen, I'm writing to those of you who are sanctified in God and kept in Jesus. But he says, but I want to send you mercy. Mercy and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. Jude said, listen, I, I just wanted to, to write to you about our common salvation. One one thing that I sometimes miss, I miss writing letters. You know, um, saints used to write each other and uh, 
even when I was younger, you know, in college and stuff, and I had a girlfriend, and uh, I used to write Pastor David. Can you imagine uh, that uh, when I would go back to Louisiana home, and I would write her a letter, all the letters that we wrote as saints, you know how they begin? Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. This letter finds me still saved and sanctified, filled with the precious Holy Ghost and desiring your prayers. Please know that I am praying for you as well. That's how every letter that saints wrote read. I miss that. You know, maybe when we uh, send out text messages now, or put on Facebook, we ought to start saying greetings in the name of Jesus the Christ. That's what Jude was doing. He said, I just wanted to write to you of our common salvation. You, do you know that, that one thing saints ought to do, we ought to be so glad for our salvation that we ought to share with each other. Do you ever tell anybody, I'm so glad I'm saved? Hallelujah. I'm so glad I'm sanctified. Do you ever get into conversations where you say, isn't it great being sanctified? Or isn't it just good being holy? Do you ever spend time together and, and you just simply say, I'm so glad God saved me. Woo, hallelujah. That's what Jude was doing. He said, I just felt like writing about our common salvation. I, I was in a meeting with uh, a brother today. I just met him for the first time. Uh, he's, he's a minister and where I work, there was a lady there uh, when she met him and uh, she said, you look like a preacher. And he said, I am. She said, uh, there's another preacher that works here, Jeff Carter. And he said, he gave her his card. And says, he had given my card. And uh, she came back and she says, oh, this, this gentleman asked me to give you his card. And I called him. And the day we had a uh, lunch, met for the first time ever. It was such a glorious meeting, just sitting there enjoying each other's company. And the one thing that we said is, you know those who are saved by the blood of the lamb because there's a similarity, there's a commonness, there is a like among them. That's what Jude was saying, we have a common salvation. You've heard me teaching Ephesus that, that if you really are saved, if you really are sanctified, that, that even when you get around people that have never met you before, they ought to know that there is something different about you. On your job, in your neighborhood, do people know that there's a difference about you? But then Jude said, but that's something even more important. He says, when I first started writing, I just wanted to write about being saved. I just wanted to write about the joy of having the Holy Ghost, the, the peace that comes with God's presence. He said, but now, you know what I really need to tell you? You know what I really need to exhort you? Earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered to the saints. Listen. <laughs> If there is anything that I can tell you tonight, I want to tell you, fight for your faith. Fight for your faith. Never give up. As a matter of fact, Jude made it even a little bit stronger. And, and while I'm talking, I'm, I'm taking my uh, phone out so that I can get my message Bible. So if you see me moving, listen to me. Let me uh, announce once again, we are totally not professional. I set up for Bible study tonight here in my living room. And uh, I recognize I've done quite a bit of television. And when I go into the television studio, I watch them moving lights around and they're moving curtains around and they're telling you to turn a little bit this way because it is unprofessional to see any shadows. If you ever look at television or movies, you see absolutely no shadows. And I said, when I set up tonight, man, these, these, these are a whole bunch of shadows here behind me. And then I said, I better let people know we are not professional. It's just us home folk doing the best we can. And so if you see me moving around and everything, I am not professional at all. We just home folk with the word. Here's my message, Bible. 
Let me read those first couple of verses from the Message Bible. I, Jude, am a slave to Jesus Christ and brother to James, writing to those loved by God the Father, called and kept safe by Jesus Christ. And then when he wrote this, it got me. He said, relax. Everything's going to be all right. Rest. Everything's coming together. Open your hearts. Love is on the way. And then he says, fight with all you have in you. I said, my sisters and brothers, whatever you do, don't you dare give up. Fight. Tell the devil, you can't take my faith. I'm not going to give up on God. I, I, I like the way the King James Version said, the King James Version said, earnestly. Earnestly means with everything you got. Earnestly means with all of your heart. Earnestly means put everything in it. But he said, earnestly contend. That word contend has a little bit different connotation to it because contend seems to suggest that you're not just fighting, but you're fighting for a purpose. You're fighting for a reason. You're fighting to gain something. You're not, that. there is the state of just fighting to hold on, but then there's a state that says, I'm not just fighting to hold on, I'm fighting to win. Ha, I'm fighting to gain something. As a matter of fact, in boxing, contenders are contending for the championship. They're contending for the faith. We're fighting to say it doesn't matter what happens. Yeah, and yeah, it is a fight. That's clear, it's, it's a fight. It's a struggle. Life is not meant to be lived like, like the old song and the old folk said, on flowery beds of ease. It's a fight. How do we fight? You fight with your prayer. You fight trusted in the word of God. Hallelujah. You fight with consecration. Sometimes you gotta fast with fasting. And let me do a little bit about fasting that people think you know that fasting just says, well, you know, you, you don't eat breakfast. And if you're going to fast into three, you don't eat lunch. And of course, there are a lot of uh, modern day fast now. Uh, Sometimes people say, well, we're going to fast from a such and such a time until such and such a time. And uh, it's not as much. Yeah, it, it, it is important to give up something when you fast. But it's not just about being hungry. A lot of people are not really fasting. They're just going hungry for a period of time. You, you gotta feel that thing, not only in your body, but in your soul. Let me do another. Some of us now have reached the age in our physical selves when we can't fast like we used to, and God knows that. Uh, when I was, uh, oh God, young in high school, my mother started teaching us how to fast, and I think my mother would very often go on three day and three night fast. And I mean, for three days and three nights, no food, no water, no chewing gum, absolutely nothing for three days and three nights. And even when we were teenagers, ma mama started us, uh, even before we were teenagers, when we were in elementary school, Tuesdays in the Church of God in Christ, Tuesdays and Fridays were fast day. When we were elementary school, and some people say that's wrong, that's child abuse, we, we fasted not those long fasts. On Tuesdays and Fridays, we knew we didn't eat breakfast. Lunch at school was probably around 11 o'clock. And I suppose when you are, you know, like in elementary school, that's a long time, but it wasn't just fasting, but the prayer along with us was so strongly emphasized that we knew it's not just going without food, but we pray. By the time we were in high school, we were fasting until three o'clock. And school usually let out about 3.15, so that meant it, it was even longer. We, we fasted until, on Tuesdays and Fridays very often, we fasted until we got home from school. 
it was mama strongly encouraging us. You know, we wouldn't have gotten a beating or a whipping, but mama just said, in our house, we fast and pray. And by the time we were out of high school, we were joining mama on three day and three night fast. And let me tell you something, somebody might say that was a whole lot, but it worked. Oh God, it worked. We were fighting. We were fighting for our fast. One of the things that I would do when I was in college, uh, we, we were strong note takers. And uh, you, you had to buy notebooks for every class. And I got to the place where I would date my notebooks ahead of time. I would date my notebooks like uh, I think today is the 10th. So yesterday was the 9th. That would have meant Monday was the 8th. I would date my notebooks that I was gonna take notes in in school. And my notebooks would be dated Monday, March 8th, next couple of pages, Tuesday, March 9th, Wednesday, March 10th, so on. And then on that day that was Tuesday, March 9th, I would just put right at the top of the page, fast day, pray. All through my notebook would be written, fast day, hallelujah, pray. And I did, encouraged me to fast and pray. Pastor, are you telling us now that we got to go on three day and three night fast? Nope, not if you don't want to. But probably doing a little bit of fasting ain't going to kill you. It ain't going to hurt you. It's a way to fast. It's a way to fight. It's not just abstaining from food, though. Somebody might want to say, you know what? I just need to give up some television. I need to give up some of those things that call my attention because that's the only way I'm going to get into fighting mode. Fight with all you have. And I like what King James Version said. Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I, I sort of don't like here that uh, the Message Bible, um, he, he uh, the, the writer was not Pentecostal and sometimes things that really uh, uh, talked about the saints, they sort of left it off. And the, the King James Version says, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. I, I so badly want to go back to the old time way that old time way where we co were committed to fasting, where we were committed to praying. Listen, Ephesus, those of you who have been with me all the time, don't, don't forget that our last year, maybe almost two years, yeah, last two years at uh, Prince of Peace, Pastor Debbie said, the Lord put it on my heart that every first Friday night that we would have a shut-in. And we started approximately 10 o'clock. Every first Friday night, we started at approximately 10 o'clock and we shut in until six or seven o'clock the next morning on our knees in prayer. And some of us stretched out on our bellies in prayer. And, and I tell you, I love to stretch out on my faith and, and all night, long from 10 o'clock p.m. that night until six or seven or sometimes eight o'clock the next morning, we would be stretched out in prayer every night. When we first started Ephesus, I don't know if some of you remember now, we brought the same thing to Ephesus. I remember many, many cold nights. All night long, we would be there in that stone cold building, praying all night long. I, I think about Mother Guilford now. I hope Mother Guilford is on the line because Mother Guilford lives out not far from us. And Mother Guilford, I don't even know if you remember some of them uh, Saturday mornings about seven or seven thirty, when uh, we were leaving and uh, me and Pastor David were dropping you off at home, but we prayed all night long. Some of us now, might have gotten older and we can't do some of the things that we used to do, but we need to pray and encourage and teach our young people, fight for the faith that used to be in the church. Faith and righteousness, faith 
in holiness. Let me read one or two more verses. But I really wanted to get across to you. Fight for the faith. Contend for the faith. This is what Jude says here, why we need to fight. And I'm going to close when I read this. He said, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believed not. Let me tell you something. Don't take my word for it. Just hang around and wait. God has said, I'm getting ready to change my church. He, he, Jude said, certain men crept in unawares. He said, but let me remind you that when it happened before, God saved the people and destroyed them that believed not. Saints, we live with the God of mercy, but he's still a God of justice. And I really hear God said, I'm gonna change some things. And in order for me to change some things, I've got to move some stuff out of the way. I, 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 I guess I just have too much compassion to say, for, to say that God is gonna move some people out of the way. I'm just saying God is gonna move some stuff out of the way. Let me go down and close. I'm going to the last verse in Jude. And uh, give me a second. Y'all are still with me here. Verses 24 and 25. I love these verses. In Genesis, the Bible said, when God made man, he said to man, I give you dominion. I give you dominion. Now look at what God says. Now to him who can keep you on your feet, standing tall in his bright presence, fresh and celebrating to our one God, our only savior through Jesus Christ, our master, be glory, majesty, strength, and rule before all time and now to the end of all time. Yes, and let me read that in the King James Version of the Bible because I like the way the King James writer said it. He said, now unto him, hallelujah, that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. And I got so many faults. But God says, you keep on serving my son, Jesus. And one day Jesus is going to present you to me. And when I see you, I'm not going to see you for who you are. I'm going to see you through the eyes of my son, Jesus. He said, and Jesus is going to present you faultless. Hey, before the presence of his glory. That's why I'm going to keep hanging out with Jesus. Because when Jesus takes me, on the day of judgment, he's going to say, God, look at Jeff. He's got no fault in him. I, I'm not going to take a chance on doing it by myself. I'm going to stick with Jesus. He said now to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory. That's what God wants, church. No matter what's going on in your life, just keep telling God, God, get the glory out of my life. God, even if it's suffering, get the glory out of myself. God, I'm crying. I'm hurting. But can you get glory out of my tears? God, let me help you get glory out of my tears. Because even while I'm crying, I'm going to lift my hands and say, thank you. Even while I'm hurting, I'm going to find a way to say, God, even in my pain, praise you. Glory to God. God, get a testimony, hallelujah, out of me. Now be glory and majesty, 
And God said that dominion I gave you now, he said dominion and power, both now and forever. God get the glory out of our lives tonight. If there is anybody listening to me, God, who is just about to give up, if there is anybody listening tonight who even feels so overwhelmed that they want to give up, even God, if there is somebody that's saying, I want to hold on, but I don't know how, mm. you get the glory out of their lives and let them know, God, that whatever they are going through, you have purpose in it. You have a plan in it and that you work it out for their salvation. We bless you. We glory in you and we honor you in Jesus name. Amen. God bless everybody. Listen, those of you who are listening tonight, join us in prayer. If you want to know how to join us in prayer, just uh, check our website, Ephesus ministries.com Ephesus ministries.org you can contact us directly through the website or you can contact us at Ephesus info at gmail.com we'll be so glad to hear from you but until then please know that we're praying for you God bless and we will see you soon thank you